I'm honestly not sure there's been a set of commander decks for a core set more impressive than the four we're getting for murders at Karlov Manor. All of them were revealed yesterday in separate videos, and I'm going to go through each one in a separate video talking about the new cards and then some of the notable reprints, because I have to say, in addition to some new cards that seem really fun to play and a few that seem kind of busted, uh, there are some really strong reprints in all of these decks that we're definitely going to want to talk about. So we're going to get right into it. And the first video today is going to be talking about the Deep Clue C Commander deck. This is green, white, blue, and Morska Undersea Sleuth is the cover card or one of the face commanders. Um, it is green, white, blue, legendary creature Vidalkin fish detective and it says you have no maximum hand size at the beginning of your upkeep investigate whenever you draw your second card each turn put two plus one plus one counters on Morska undersea sleuth so it's pretty low to the ground in terms of its cost, which is definitely something cool that it has going for it. And of course, being able to generate clue tokens pretty consistently isn't bad. Drawing, you know, your second card each turn and giving it counters is nice. It doesn't really do a whole lot, though, as the face commander, in my opinion. It feels relatively slow, especially compared to some of the other options we might have to make this work. But I definitely think it's a good card that you'd want to include in the deck. And being a detective and a fish of course, does give it access to uh, some other support cards that we've seen in this set and in other products. Overall, it's a solid card that I think would be a good inclusion, but it's not my personal choice for the face commander. I think that honor actually has to go to Sophia Dogged Detective. Now, this is one green, white, blue. It is a legendary creature human detective. It says when it enters the battlefield, create Tiny, a legendary 2-2 green dog detective creature token with trample. You can pay one, sacrifice an artifact token, put a plus one, plus one counter on each dog you control. Whenever a dog you control deals combat damage to a player, create a food token, then investigate. Okay, so we know that there's a lot of dog, you know, cards that exist. Rin and Seri, a very popular commander, but this is a very different color combination and obviously has no association with cats. What's cool about this, though, is that obviously you get tiny right off the bat, so you're getting a token that works with this. But if you play it with other dogs, especially white and green, uh, you can actually, you know, not only make them kind of beefy, but you can keep creating tokens. Uh, you can utilize this with a lot of the cards in white and green that modify tokens and, and can multiply your tokens. This just feels like on the surface a lot more, like it has a lot more potential in terms of being able to be used in different ways and it combos better with a lot of things. And I think just the fact that you could build it like utilizing the token it creates and clue tokens and, and dogs in general, or like build a dog tribal deck around it perhaps, um, means you can take this in a bunch of different directions. So out of the two, I definitely think this is my preference, but both have a place for sure um, in terms of the face commanders for this deck. Armed with proof is two and a white enchantment when it enters the battlefield, investigate twice. Lose your controller equipment in addition to their other types and have equipped creature gets plus two plus zero and equip two. So this is actually kind of neat. Um, the thing that's a little bit unfortunate about it, of course, is because they're equipments that have equipped two. Yes, it's cool that they can buff your stuff up, but you're going to either pay two for the clue to sack it and draw or pay two to equip it and buff. If we're looking at a deck that can start to really kind of put a lot of clue tokens out, I could certainly see where having extra buffs is not bad. But a lot of times I think you're going to want to go for the draw power unless there's ways to equip the clues for less, which I haven't been able to see yet, at least not from the cards in this set um, but maybe there are you know other cards that can reduce the cost of equipment and then you can kind of spam the board quick with these clues and and you know sack some to draw and have a bunch I mean if you have a steady you know thing of clues going around you can obviously find different ways to make this work but it's a it's a cool enchantment for sure Serene Sleuth is a one and a white creature human detective when it enters the battlefield investigate at the beginning of combat on your turn investigate for each goaded creature you control then each creature you control is no longer goaded if you're unfamiliar goaded basically means that the creature um, has to attack either you know uh, players other than you and they must attack each turn if able obviously if your own creature is goaded it, it, it can't attack you um, but if an opponent's creature is goaded it, it also can not attack you so you can sort of use that to force your opponents to attack each other uh, and the whole theme of this deck really does play around the goaded mechanic quite a lot so i think this card will be really powerful at least in the pre-con or upgraded pre-con is it generically great probably not but it's still a decent enough card that will fit into either detectives or clues um and obviously the goad strategy works really well if your opponent is playing something that does go to your creatures you can then of course kind of turn that off um, and have a little bit more control over your board so it's a it's neat for what it is 
Detective of the Month is two in a blue with Ascend. Of course, nice to see that mechanic back again. If you control 10 or more permanents, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. As long as you have the city's blessing, detectives you control can't be blocked. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 2-2 white and blue detective creature token. This one's pretty solid. There are a lot of new detective cards, and I'm sure there's some other ones that exist as well. I'd have to go back kind of through the logs and see. Um, but making them all unblockable if you have the city's blessing is pretty solid in terms of allowing your stuff to get through. And with a lot of the new cards we have that can buff detectives, um, it seems like detective your drival may be a real thing. Um, obviously, I understand why this card wasn't printed in standard because it would be very, very easy to kind of abuse this with, um, you know, four copies of each card in the deck. But I think this is neat. Um, it Does it do a ton for, you know, main, like for the, the objective of this deck? I, I would argue probably not really. Um... But I guess it does allow detectives to get through that need to deal combat damage, so it does have that going for it. But it's a it's a cool card, and I think it's going to have a place more specifically with uh, some of the other new detective cards that were released. Follow the Bodies is two and a blue. It has Gravestorm. When you cast this spell, copy it for each permanent put into a graveyard from the battlefield this turn. Obviously a play on Storm. I don't know if this is the first time Gravestorm has appeared as a keyword or not, though. Someone let me know in the comments, because I haven't heard of it, but there's a million cards. Um, and then it investigates. So basically, for each permanent put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you can, so if you sack your clues off or do things like that, those still count being put into the battlefield. Uh, into the graveyard, you can just create a bunch of clue tokens. So it's kind of cute, and it obviously does play in really well with the deck. Cards like Academy Manufacturer, which is actually getting a reprint in this deck, which is fantastic, um, will obviously be able to make use of this card as well, because you can just create not only are you creating tokens uh, for food and clue and treasure, you're basically creating multiple amounts of all of them, and that's um, that, you know, that's obviously going to start to become problematic for your opponents. Angle Trove Kelp is five. Blue, blue artifact creature, clue plant with ward two. At the beginning of each combat, other clues you control become six, six plant creatures in addition to their other types until end of turn. You can pay two and sacrifice Tangle Trove Kelp to draw a card. I don't know. This one strikes me as really freaking strong right off the bat. I know the mana cost is going to be what kind of makes it a little bit more balanced, um, but it's not super hard to reduce the cost of artifacts either, so just something to keep in mind. Um, if you have a lot of clues and you can just turn them all into plants, you can swing for massive damage, and we've seen a ton of cards already that can generate clue tokens. That's not even taking into consideration the token multipliers and doublers and stuff that we have to work with, so this card could explode real quick. Um, and obviously with Ward as well, it's a little harder for the opponent to get rid of. I feel like this is a really, really cool card. And, and obviously not being a legendary creature means you can't play it as a commander. Um, uh, imagine being able to utilize this as your commander and build the whole thing around making clue tokens could be kind of fun. Um, but I also, I sort of get why. And also you, you do, you would lose access to the other colors that would kind of make this pop off the way that I think it could. Um, but yeah, this, this is definitely my favorite card, uh, new card in the decks. I think it's really strong overall, and I'm excited to see what type of impact it has. All right, next up, we've got Innocuous Researcher. This is three in a green centaur detective with Parley. Whenever it attacks, each player reveals the top card of their library. For each non-land card revealed this way, you investigate. Then each player draws a card. At the beginning of your end step, you may untap all lands you control. If you do, you can't cast spells until your next turn. So it's a, a wilderness reclamation slash seedborn muse, but really only for clues, I think. Obviously, you can still sack clues um, and activate abilities for whatever that's worth, but being able to play spells from your hand, this would be kind of busted if you could just get those benefits from it and be able to untap your stuff at the end of the turn so i kind of understand why that's not the case um but it's certainly good for clues and you can kind of maybe get some free draws out of it too um you know if you have a good bit of lands and, and we know green can ramp so it's not hard to set that up again you just make sure you remember that you really can't cast spells after you use it so it does have that bit of a downside uh but it's still free resources that you're getting access to and being able to sack off the clues on the Trail is a really powerful card. It is one in a green enchantment. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. Um, pretty generically strong. Uh, really good for green, really good for ramp. I mean, not hard to utilize, and if you play a lot of lands, um, this is pretty damn solid. I don't have too much to say about it, like, from an insight perspective, but this is just going to be a card you'll want to look at if you're building any type of green slash ramp strategy and you can draw any type of, um, you know, consistent card sources. It's just really good. Um, it's not broken, I don't think. Obviously, the card comes into play tap, but, like, it helps with ramp and it doesn't cost a lot to play. And obviously, being an enchantment means you can combo it with the million enchantment cards that green have, even the stuff they got in Commander Masters a little while back. Um, overall, this is just a really solid card with not a lot of complexity to it, but still a really strong effect that we don't have a ton of um, for such low cost. And finally, for the new cards, Knowledge is Power. This is three white, blue enchantment creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of cards you've drawn this turn. 
This is pretty good too. It's a little costly though at five. Obviously, if, you, if you're playing a deck where you can just continue to draw, if you're sacking off a ton of clues and getting a lot of draw power, you can really buff your creatures up. Obviously, the buffs don't stay. It doesn't put counters on them or anything like that. So it's, you know, each turn, um, it's going to be some turns where it's a little more explosive than others. But as a whole, I do think it's pretty solid. Um, I just think it may end up being outclassed uh, because of its mana cost. But if you have ways to get it out without paying its cost, it can certainly pay dividends for you without a doubt. Now, those are the 10 new cards, but I wanted to mention quickly the notable reprints as well. There are a lot of really good cards in this deck in general, um, but one of the, the biggest reprints here that we're seeing is Benny Brack Zoologist. This was from New Capenna Commander, so a couple years old at this point, which is crazy, um, but a pretty pricey card. Uh, Academy Manufacturer, always good, always starts to get hype whenever there's more token strategies coming out. I think it's been in, like, one other deck, so another really good reprint. Finale of Revelation, like a $10 card, uh, really strong. When I first saw the list, I thought this was Finale of Devastation, and I was like, oh, they're double dimming that like that's a crazy reprint but this is still good value obviously farewell one of the best board wipes in general for commander um and and getting a reprint here coma cosmo serpent another really strong card very fan favorite commander popular card in general um in the deck and then kappa cannoneer was a card that had a ton of hype for a long time it's still very good it's not worth what it was at its peak when it came out in kamigawa but it's definitely still worth more than you know your generic like bulk insert in the deck and and there are a lot of other good cards too but these are just some of the more notable ones overall um, in my personal opinion, this is probably the least interesting of the four, but I think it's still pretty damn good, and it does have a lot of good value in it. Um, if you could find this at, at whatever the quote-unquote retail would be, which is probably somewhere around $45, $40, um, definitely not the worst idea for a pickup. I think we'll see some of these cards in here. The reprints sort of help drive the price, but... Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. We will continue talking about these decks in the next day or two. I'm going to probably have another video later today talking about one of the other decks. But I want to know what you guys think. Is this one you're interested in buying? Or are you skipping on it? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.